Welcome to this series of videos where I'll be drawing out from perineal anatomy. First, we need to define what the perineum is. Clinically, the term perineum is often used to describe the region between the external genitalia and the anus, but anatomically we define the perineum as the region inferior to the pelvic floor. This means the borders of the perineum are formed by the pelvic outlet, that opening at the bottom of the pelvis. So to draw out the perineum, we need to start with an inferior view looking up into the outlet. Anteriorly, we'll have the connection between the two pelvic bones at the pubic symphysis. From here, two branches of bone or rami head posteriorly and inferiorly until they reach the ischial tuberosities. These are those roughened bumps at the base of the pelvis that you rest your weight on when you sit down. Next, we'll add the sacrum and the coccyx. These form the most posterior point of the perineum. Finally, we need to add the ligaments that pass between the sacrum and the ischial tuberosities, known with characteristic creativity as the sacro-tuberous ligaments. These run on either side to form the diamond-shaped boundaries of the perineum. Several important structures pass through this region, most notably the urethra, rectum, and in around half of the population, the vagina. We can divide the perineum by adding an imaginary line between the two tuberosities. Posterior to this line is a three-sided space that contains the terminal portion of the rectum, aka the anus, so we call this region the anal triangle. The space in front of the line contains the urethra, and as we'll see later, it also provides attachment for the external genitalia, so we call this the urogenital triangle. Now, I'm not a man who's generally known for his controversial opinions, but at this point I'm going to discuss a structure that divides the anatomical community. Some authors say it drift, while others say it doesn't. For this drawing, I'm going to add it, because conceptually I find it a really handy way to visualise the arrangement of the perineum. The structure in question is a membrane that covers the urogenital triangle, known as the urogenital diaphragm. Assuming that it does exist, this diaphragm is formed by two layers of fascia. A superior layer starts at the pubic symphysis and heads back towards the tuberosities. It then folds under itself, and an inferior fascial layer returns to the pubic bones. You may also hear this inferior layer called the perineal membrane. Between these two layers is a space, known as the deep perineal pouch, and even the diaphragm deniers accept the presence of this pouch. Now there are a few things you need to know about this space. First, the section of the urethra passing through it is known as the membranous urethra. At this point we'll find skeletal muscle fibres wrapping around the tube, and these form the external urethral sphincter, the structure responsible for voluntary control over urination. In the male pelvis, we'll also find bulbo-urethral glands. These release a pre-ejaculate fluid that neutralises the normal acidity of the urethra in preparation for sperm to travel along it. So, that's the urogenital diaphragm and the deep perineal pouch. In the next video, I'm going to add the external genitalia, but until then, if you have any questions, please just get in touch. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Cheers.